Come on. Come on. One more. One more. Come on. Past paper walkthroughs, tricky questions, top tips. Come on, just give me one more sub. <laughs> yes, Bosch. Bosch. Okay, right, enough messing about. Let's get on with the maths. Come on, let's get on with it. Use parametric differentiation to find the gradient of C at X equals three. And we have these two beautiful parametric equations. X is equal to this and Y is equal to that. Lovely. Okay then. So how do we find the gradient function? Well, first we need to find dx by dt. And that is equal to, well, when I differentiate five, it goes to zero, but when I differentiate two tan, it goes to two sec squared. That is one of the standard ones you need to know. And then I can find dy by dt also, which is, well, when I differentiate that, that's the chain rule. So I'm gonna write it as eight sec t squared like that. And the two times by the eight to make uh, 16. We keep the bracket the same. We drop the power down by one to make one. And then we multiply it by the derivative of the bracket, which is sec t tan t, because sec differentiates to sec tan. Another one of those ones where you need to know. Um, but it is in your formula book, but you still should know it anyway. Okay, um, let's now simplify this. 16 sec squared t tan t. And then to find dy by dx, we need to do dy by d, um, t divided by dx by dt. So this will give me um, well, 16 sec squared t tan t on top. And on the bottom, we will have 2 sec squared t. So this will cancel to give 8 tan t. Lovely. Now we want to know where it is when x is equal to 3. And we want to know what the gradient is, sorry, when x is equal to 3. So we need to find the corresponding t value uh, to substitute in there. So I'm going to set x equal to 3, and we know that x is equal to 5 plus 2 tan t. So that's equal to 5 plus 2 tan t. Minus the 5 gives me minus 2 is equal to 2 tan t. So minus one is equal to tan t. Now actually I don't need to find the uh, value of t because my gradient is in terms of tan t and I've got tan t at the point I'm looking for is minus one. So we can say that the gradient at x equals three is eight multiplied by tan t which is minus one. So that's equal to minus eight. Perfect. Okay, let's grab some more space and then we will do um, part B. And part B is asking us to find x in the f of x in the, this form. Okay, so this is a classic where we just have to, um, we have to eliminate t essentially uh, in our parametric equations to get it in, in terms of, of just y equals. Um, so in doing so, I am going to um, look at x um, and see if I can uh, substitute, well, the tan. I know tan squared uh, has a relationship with sec squared. So let's try and find tan squared. So I'm going to go um, x minus 5 uh, is equal to 2 tan t. Uh, I'm going to square both sides of this now, uh, which will give me 4 tan squared t. Um, and then I'm actually going to times both sides by 2, because I can see there's an 8 on the in the other equation. So having 8 tan squared uh, t would be quite helpful. Okay, now let's move over to the y. Um, and we know the relationship between sec squared and tan squared because tan squared plus one is equal to sec squared. And if we're ever in doubt about that, we can always just write quickly sine squared plus cos squared is equal to one. If I'm looking for a sec squared, then I need to divide by cos squared. Uh, so do that um, 
on all of them, like this. Um, sine over cos is tan, so that's tan squared. Cos over cos is just one, and then one over cos is sec squared as required. So that's just a quick way, just in case you forget in your exam, you can always do that. And you can do it as well by dividing by sine squared to get the other one, which is between cot and cosec. Okay, um, y is equal to eight um, sec squared, but we know sec squared is equal to tan squared plus one. So tan squared t plus one. Um, so y is equal to eight tan squared t plus eight. Uh, so y is equal to, well, 8 tan squared t is equal to this, which is 2x minus 5 squared, and then plus 8 as well. Um, perfect. And of course, um, y is equal to f of x, as it says here. So we can say that f of x is equal to 2x minus 5 squared plus 8. Perfect. Okay, right over to C, find the range of F. Now, I picked this question because I know lots of people hate finding the range. Um, and I know that lots of people always lose marks when finding the range. So, um, we need to look at the curve here. They've given us the curve. Okay, so we need to look at that and think about where the maximum and minimum points are, or the, the end, the start and the end of the range. So the highest y value is obviously here, uh, and the lowest y value um, is here. So let's go for the lowest one first, because that's easiest, I guess, because we've got this um, <clears throat> this uh, completed square. So that will be able to tell us quite quickly what the minimum point is, um, because if we have uh, f of x is equal to 2x minus 5, squared plus 8 and we want to minimize that then this square bracket here can never be anything uh, negative so the smallest it could be a 0 uh, and of course that is 0 when x is equal to 5 uh, and that will leave us with f of x is equal to 8 so it will be 0 plus 8 which is just 8 so this is 8 here okay um, now how do we find this one well um, we need to know the, the corresponding t value for that and then sub it into the y. Um, now my guess would be that the t value is equal to minus pi over 3, uh, just because it's the start of the domain. Um, it's not always true that, so you have to be a bit careful, but in this case it is fine because the x coordinates are, are um, in relationship with tan. And we know what the tan graph looks like between minus pi over 3 and pi over 4. It's just going to look like this. So that means that tan is always increasing um, over this uh, domain. Uh, so that means that x is also increasing uh, over this domain. So that means that as t increases, x also increases. So the smallest x happens when t is the smallest uh, which is minus pi over 3 so we're good to do that we're good to just sub in y is equal to 8 sec squared minus pi over 3 um, of course we could do our calculator for that but uh, I like to just do it in my head just to make sure so sec squared is the same as cos squared or the reciprocal sorry of cos squared um, cos is an even function, which means that if you sub in a negative angle, it's the same as subbing in the positive angle. Just think about the graph and how that would relate. Um, cos of pi over 3 is cos of 60 degrees, which is a half. So we're just doing um, 8 over a half squared. So y is 8 over a half squared, um, which is 8 over a quarter which is 32. Okay, so we can therefore write our final answer for the range um, is that x lies between uh, 32 and, oh, well, actually, where does it start? Sorry, I've lost it, 8. Yes, so uh, it's 8 is less than or equal to f of x, which is less than or equal to 32. And then finally, just a quick check, can they actually equal these values? Well, yes, it definitely can equal 8, 
when x is 5, and it can definitely equal 32 when t is minus pi over 3, which it is allowed to be because it says here t can equal minus pi over 3. Enjoyed that. See you later. Bye for now.